Uh, hi, Luke. Hi, Breck. How are you both? Hey, Stefan. How are you doing? Good. How are yeah, you? really good, thanks. I really enjoyed the, uh, the show. I'm actually on holiday this week, so I usually, when I'm on holiday, I take a bit of time off, but I enjoyed it so much that I thought, I've got to speak to you guys. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, Where are you? you? I'm just, I'm just, I'm obviously, because of the, that global pandemic that seems to be on at the moment, I, um, I'm in Suffolk in, in the UK, so oh, nice. not too far from London. But, um, right, just outside London, like the country yeah, yeah. park. Cool. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, but anyway, I'll get started because I haven't got too long. But I just wondered uh, just what it was about Stargirl that initially attracted you both to, to getting involved. For me, I got the audition for it. And I'm like, oh, awesome. But also just like once I got cast, talking to Jeff, he, he was so passionate about it. And I always want to work with or for someone who's passionate about what they're doing. It made it so much more enjoyable. And just that I loved the superhero aspect being mixed with like the coming of age high school dynamic I think it was really interesting and that was a fun role to like be able to balance both of those things yeah for me it was um getting I when I met with Jeff to talk about it just really liked him so much personally and you know as as Breck knows like you know this was going to be a six-month job and if it went well, you know, maybe another six months and another six months. So you knew you were going to be spending a lot of time with these people. And I just like Jeff so much and the script that I just, you know, it was as simple as like, yeah, this is somebody I'd like to work for and with for, you know, a, a long time. So that, that's what it was for me. Yeah, yeah. Is that something that plays into your mind when you're sort of going for a role like this? Because usually, if with a movie, you might be on set, let's say a month, yeah. maybe a few months away. But I guess this could, you know, so if you look at the Game of Thrones actors, they were attached to that show for ten or twelve years. I mean, it's, right. it's a big commitment, isn't it? Yeah, you definitely think about it. And I was just reading something about Michael Douglas, and he was just saying he just doesn't want to work with people that he that you know that he doesn't get along with. And I mean, you know, it's like not in a position where, where you can pick and choose where you only work with people you like, but hopefully, you know, you'll get the chance to work with people that you get along with. And I know Breck and I both felt the same way about Jeff Johns as he was just the ideal boss where he was collaborative yet he, you know, knew what he wanted and he was just the ideal guy to have at the helm. Yes. It's interesting. You mentioned Michael Douglas because I interviewed him for Ant-Man and the Wasp. And he admitted to me that he didn't know too much about the kind of comic book world that he was sort of uh, entering into. Uh, but I was wondering about you guys and your kind of initial, uh, your prior kind of experience with this, with not, not just this world, but the whole kind of DC universe. Is it something you had to, to brush up on a little bit or were you quite well versed already? I had watched all the DC films, but as for like comic books, I never read a comic book before. So when I got cast as Stargirl, it was so funny. The day I got cast, I was actually on my way to the airport right after my screen test. And I was on vacation for five days. And when I got home, my mom had gone to every comic book store and searched for any Stars and Stripes comic. <laughs> I have now read a couple. So how to brush up. Yeah, I, I wasn't that well versed in the comic book world and didn't really know about Stargirl, but I'd always kind of liked going into comic book stores and I liked the art and I just always kind of appreciated how you know it's like sports fans or record collectors how into it they are and kind of protecting it and like this is you know a, a first a first edition of Batman that's never been opened like I always kind of think that kind of fandom is is cool but I I once once I was cast I did read uh, a bunch of the star girls and also just kind of learning about like the difference between DC and Marvel and which superheroes are in which universe. Yeah, I just found all that stuff kind of fun and interesting. And then also just, yeah, how opinionated people are and how knowledgeable people are about it. I, I, I always liked that kind of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I covered Comic Con uh, in New York about three years ago and I was in awe of not, yeah. not, just, not people's knowledge, but just how much it means to people is so kind of, I was kind of, it was quite overwhelming, but kind of inspiring at the same time. Yeah, I did the same thing where I um, might judge the Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill guy. I, I did a Q&A with him at Comic-Con in New York. And so we went to that Javits Center and yeah, just never seen anything like it. People, you know, dressed up and 
you know, packed, you know, uh, ballrooms and stuff. And yeah, it was, it's, yeah, like you were saying, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. And obviously, I mean, the, the superhero aspects and the fantastic as- fantastical aspects are a huge part of this. But I love the very positive portrayal of this family unit that wasn't bonded so much by blood, but by just the family kind of the, the strength that comes with kind of the, the family kind of a dynamic. Um, how important is it to, to display this type of dynamic? Because I've got so many friends and stuff that I grew up with who grew up with step parents and not the kind of conventional family kind of that we that we, we, we used to see when we were we were kids. I'm just wondering about, yeah, just this 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 portrayal, this very authentic but very positive portrayal of of your yeah. character's relationship. I found it really interesting, and just just like you, I I mean, my parents weren't divorced, but most of my friends' parents kind of were divorced, so I was aware of like, you know, kids spending one weekend with one parent, one weekend with another parent, and and just you know, as we began to do the show, I would just I did find myself thinking like, wow, I, I'm as Pat treating Courtney much differently than I treat Mike, my own son, where I'm more kind of deferential to her. And also, you know, because she's, you know, a teenager and and things like that, but definitely found myself thinking about things like that, kind of how I treated her and how I treated Mike and kind of trying to, to make the family unit work, even though, yeah, I wasn't her father. Yeah, I feel like there are like a lot of conventional family stories out there, but this family unit is very common in real life. And as an actor, I always want to do things that like make people feel represented and characters that people identify with. And I feel like this story allows that for a lot of people. So yeah, I think it's very important for this day and age. And I was reading, uh, Breck, and I don't know if this is true, but I'm hoping it is, that you celebrated your birthday on set. Is that right? Yeah, my 20th birthday on set. So I was just wondering what you guys, did you guys do anything for the occasion? Was there any sort of, did, yeah, did, I don't know, or Jeff or anyone sort of do anything sort of special for the day? It was, so the funny thing is, is my birthday was on a Saturday and we normally work Monday through Friday, but we had things that we like to call (laughs) Friday days where we would start at 5 p.m. and work to 7 a.m. And fortunately, my birthday was on a, or like the day, that filming day was a Friday day. So at midnight, not at midnight, I guess it was a little after, whatever, our lunch break, we call it lunch, even though it's at like 2 a.m., whatever. They brought out a cake and they sang to me. And it was really cool because I got to go home and go to bed <laughs> and wake up and it was still my birthday. <laughs> It's like a double birthday. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I was wondering, one other thing when we were mentioning the kind of fandom that comes with this is fans love theories and they love crossovers and they love all of that stuff. They love see, they love finding a character and wondering how they can work it into kind of other aspects or, or sort of versions of this universe. I was just wondering from your guys' perspective, is there a crossover you'd love to see Stargirl take place in another DC character that you'd like to, to see, you know, in, in so, somehow um, in, in a Stargo episode or vice versa? Yeah, I mean, I feel like these crossovers are such big events. Of course, I want to be part of one. Um, I think Supergirl and Stargirl just makes sense. Yeah. So that would be kind of like my first go-to. Yeah, I, I mean, I always think about like just the, who's in the DC universe. So, you know, I always go back to like who I grew up with, with like Batman and Superman. It would be really cool to see one of those iconic superheroes that you know was first you know that that originated in like the 40s and the 50s meet up with with uh breck star girl who was originally written in 1995 and then the show just started in 2020 so yeah i'd I'd like to see one of those older superheroes match up with breck's star girl and I just want to ask quickly as well about the timing of this release. I mean, it just feels so nice to have a different world to step into just for an hour, just, you know, 45 minutes. And it just really feels like this is an escapism we need right now. Are you guys quite pleased that, you know, what with what's going on in the world, that this show is, is coming out now? Because it feels like the sort of thing millions of people around the world could really do with right now. Yeah, I definitely felt that way. And I remember when the pandemic kind of first started in March, thinking, gosh, I wish the the show was going to be starting earlier than May, thinking that it would be over by May. Um, but then, yeah, to have this on when people are kind of staying at home and socially distancing and 
it, it's yeah, it's a great feeling. I've never been able to do a project where I've felt like, gosh, maybe you know, this is really allowing people, like you say, Stefan, to kind of escape for just a little bit. I mean, that's always the way you feel when you like go into a dark movie theater or have a show that you love where you kind of just get to not think about things. But the idea that, you know, we would have a project that could, the whole family could sit down and watch and enjoy and kind of re relax from all these kind of serious hardships that, that's going on is really rewarding. I think. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the time today, guys. Hopefully Thanks, if there's a, a season two, then the, the pandemic won't still be on and we can actually do yeah, there is a season that in person. Two. <laughs> Yeah, there's gonna be Hopefully a the pandemic's two. gone though. We got season two, but we don't know about the pandemic stuff. Oh no, no we don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're looking forward to season two, and hopefully there'll be like a fresh junket that we can do this in person. Anyway, yes, <laughs> maybe in London would be nice. Yeah, that'd be great. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey. hey.